Welcome to the first video in the React video series. React is a JavaScript library for front-end web development. It is used to build complex, interactive user interfaces. We'll dive into the details of React in subsequent videos. In the first video here, we are going to set up a development environment for React and write some simple code to demonstrate hello world on a web page using React. We're going to use Webpack and Babel in today's video. So if you don't know about these tools, check out the links in the description below. We are going to start off with some boilerplate code, which you can find at this shortened link below. If you go to this link, this points to a repository called React Introduction Boilerplate. So before watching the rest of the video, make sure you clone or download this repository and have it locally accessible on your computer. we have the starter code locally, let's explore the code base. Let's start with package.json. This is a node project, so we have a package.json. The node project is called introduction, and the main entry point is server.js, which is this file here. On the dependencies front, we have express, which we'll use to create a node server. We have react and react DOM. Both of these are packages required for writing react code. On the dev dependency side, we have webpack, we we'll use Webpack to module bundle all our React source code into one file called bundle.js. Our React code will be a combination of ES6 and a special JavaScript extension called JSX. Hence, we have Babel Core, Babel Loader, and these two presets. So the first preset, ES2015, will convert our ES6 code into ES5 code. And the second preset, which is called React, this will transpile JSX code into ES5 code. Finally, we'll be calling Babel via Webpack, hence we also have the Babel loader package in our package.json. So let's install these packages before continuing to the rest of the video. Let's do an npm install. Now that we have all our dependencies, let's explore more of the code base. So we have a file called server.js. Server.js uses Express to set up a web server that's listening at port 3000. And it's using the express.static middleware to serve static files from a folder named static. If you check out the static folder, it currently has one file called index.html. Index.html has a head tag, has a body tag. Within the body tag, it has a div ID equal to app. This will be useful later. And then it also includes a source file called bundle.js, which is of type JavaScript. But notice we currently don't have it in the static folder. This is because we'll be generating it dynamically towards the end of the video. But meanwhile, let's check out whether the server works or not. So let's start the server. The server is now listening on port 3000. And then let's go to the browser and try and load index.html. So the URL is localhost 3000 slash index.html. And this loads up a blank web page. We can go to the inspect tag and confirm that it's the same web page. So you have the body tag, and within that, you have a div ID to the app and the script, which is currently not available. So this is <clears throat> a node server serving index.html statically on port 3000. Now that we have a node server up and running, let's check out the rest of the code base. So we have a directory called src. This will contain all our React source code. And the main file in this folder would be app.jsx, which is currently empty. Note that the extension for this file is JSX and not JS. This is just standard notation to denote that this file will contain a combination of JS and JSX code. Next, let's check out the webpack config file. The webpack config file contains two variables. The first variable buildDIR points to the static folder, and the second variable appdir points to the source folder here. 
the config parameters are as follows. The entry parameter points to app.jsx in the source folder, which is this file. So we are asking Webpack to start module bundling at app.jsx. The output parameter points to bundle.js in the build dir, which is the static folder. So we are asking Webpack to finally bundle all of our code into a file called bundle.js in the static folder. Note that this is the same file that index.html is pointing to. We also have a few loaders in our Webpack config. We have one loader, which is the Babel loader. So we'll be invoking Babel to transpile all our code before finally bundling it to bundle.js. Finally, let's also take a look at .babelrc, which will be invoked by the Babel loader here. So the Babel RC contains two presets as expected because our code would be a combination of JSX and ES6 code. So the presets we need to invoke are ES2015 and React to transpile all our code into ES5. So that's what the code base looks like. Now let's see this workflow in action. So let's go to the source folder and in app.jsx. And let's just write some simple JavaScript. Note that this is not React code, just simple JavaScript. And let's save this. And then let's web back. So what Webpack has generated is static slash bundle.js. The flow is like this. Webpack is going to pick all files in the source folder and it's going to run Babel loader on it. Babel loader will check out Babel RC. Babel RC contains presets for ES 2015 and React. So all our code in the source folder will be first transpiled and ES6 and JSX code would be converted to ES5 code. Finally, Webpack is going to bundle all of the code in this force folder into one file called bundle.js, which is going to be a strange looking file, but that's not a file we're going to edit directly. So now that we have index.html and bundle.js generated dynamically, let's run the node server again. And this time, let's try to load index.html. So we go to the browser, it's the same URL, let's press enter. And we have the same empty page and the same source code. But this time if you go to console, we have bundle.js spitting out this console log because this is what we wrote in app.jsx. Now that we have a development environment up and running, let's write some code in React. We're going to use a combination of ES6 and JSX, and we're going to use React components and React elements. Let's import some packages that we've installed. So with the React module, we'll define React components and React elements. And with the React DOM module, we'll render these elements into the DOM. As a first step, we'll create a React component. So React component is a subclass of the React.component class. So this is a React component by the name Hello World. Note by convention, the first letter is capitalized in Hello World. And every React component has to implement a render method, which should return a React element. We're going to return a React element using JSX. JSX looks a lot like HTML. JSX goes in parenthesis. Next, we are going to create a React element by instantiating this React component. And we instantiate a React component again by using JSX. 
So this is how we instantiate a React component to get a React element. Finally, we are going to render this into the DOM. For that, we use the method on React DOM called render. React DOM dot render needs two argument. The first argument is the React element that you want to render. And the second argument is a node in the DOM where you want to render this React element. So we are going to render this React element under the div which had an id called app so this is it for our first react code we're going to save this file and then run webpack so that we can regenerate bundle.js And then we are going to run a node server again and check out this application in the browser. This hello world was generated by the React code that we wrote in app.jsx. So now we have a development environment up and running for React and we have also written our first React code. So this is it for the first video. See you in the next one.